Once upon a time, there was a man who, looking around the world, saw that it was true. Allah in heaven had given some men more money, but Allah had certainly given him more brains. And so, was it not clear that he should use his brains to get some of the money from the others? Soon his plan was ready. He had built a house on the outskirts of the city, a small house with no windows, just one door. Then he went to one of the richest merchants in the city, a man well known for his love of secrets uh, and his inability to keep one himself. My friend, he cried, my friend, I have come to you as the most worthy citizen of our city. I must tell you something, but something you must promise not to breathe a word about. A secret. I, I, I shall say nothing, of course. Well, my friend, then I can tell you, not long ago, in a dream, the prophet himself, may peace be on his name, the prophet himself came to me, told me to build a small house on the outskirts of the city, for he was going to come here for one day, one day when he could be seen only by all who were pure and noble and worthy, all others to them he would remain invisible. My friend, the house is built, but I am poor. Uh, I come to you and beg you, give me a carpet that the house may be worthy of his presence. Of course, but when does he intend to come? He told me, my friend, on the first day of the eighth month. The first day of the eighth month? Why, that is tomorrow, yes. Give me your carpet, I beg you. Well, as you can imagine, soon it was that the man left carrying a magnificent carpet and the merchant hurried off to the coffee house and by the end of the day, all in the city had heard the news. The next day, the man walked slowly towards the small house, behind him a crowd gathering came, unlocked the door, and in he went. Those outside, there was a sound, waiting, 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 until with a gasp, they heard a voice from inside call. Let those who are pure and worthy enter one by one, but tell all others they shall see nothing. The door opened once more. The man stood there. All who in their heart of hearts know they are unworthy may leave this place now. Others, the others may enter one by one. Of course, in the crowd, nobody moved, neither left nor stepped forward. They were looking left and right. Uh, trying to see who was going to move first. Soon it was that all eyes seemed to be resting on the mullah from the mosque in the city. And as the mullah felt the eyes of all upon him, well, he had to step forward. I desire to enter. Then, if in your heart of hearts you know you are worthy. The mother stepped in as he heard the door close behind him. In the light of the lamp, he could see a magnificent carpet. In the center, he could see a cushion, which was pushed down where someone was or had been sitting. But he could see nothing else. When the mullah looked and thought, oh, a fraud, that sinner, 
But as he said those words to himself, why? The memory of one of his own sins came to his mind. A, a small sin, admittedly, uh, but a sin nonetheless. Uh, and then a second and a third began to fear, but perhaps that is why I see nothing. As he turned and left the room, outside from the crowd, a voice called, what did you see? And the mullah realized if he said nothing, why then how could he continue to be a mullah? Uh, he would have to leave, leave the city. Uh, so he did what he had to say. I have seen the prophet, peace be on his name. He gave me wise advice, uh, advice which must be secret. But now I must leave and pray. And he hurried away. Then the merchant stepped up. He too stepped in. He too saw his magnificent carpet, the cushion, but nothing else. Yet when he left the house and stepped outside because he knew what to say. I have seen the prophet peace be on his head. And so it was. Each and every man who stepped in, they stepped out saying the same words. At last, at last the king arrived for he had heard what was happening. And when the king stepped in, the king too saw the carpet. Uh, the king too saw a cushion, but the king stepped out and knew what to say. At last, when all the crowd followed the king back into the city, the man himself quickly stepped into the house once more and soon after came out locking the door in his arms he seemed to be carrying something. And so he followed the crowd back to the palace where he came to the king. Your majesty, the prophet, peace be on his name. Before he returned to heaven, he took off his robe, told me to take this and give it to the worthiest, most honourable man in the kingdom who would then reward me with 10,000 gold pieces. Uh, uh, Your Majesty, I'm sure it could only have been intended for you. Well, the king, he looked, see nothing. But immediately he heard all the courtiers standing around declaiming, oh, what a wonderful robe, what splendid material, what, what, what wonderful colours. And so the king agreed with them. Yes, yes. Your majesty, please allow me to help you try it on. And so the king was obliged to take off his own robe uh, and allow the man to help him into the robe from heaven. And the man smoothed it down over the king's shoulders and adjusted the folds of the garment that they may fall just right. <laughs> uh, he, he even stepped forward and oh, took off a little hair from the material, <laughs> your majesty. <laughs> the sound of applause from the courtiers as the king walked around feeling by now a little cool he said I shall take this to somewhere which is safe for it is not for everyday use uh, and he slowly walked out of the chamber and hurried to the queen my dear um, Take this magnificent new robe and uh, have it put somewhere safe. A robe? <laughs> You're not wearing a robe. Is it right that a king should parade half naked in front of his courtiers? <laughs> oh, evil, wicked woman, of course you can see nothing, for this is only visible to those who are worthy and honourable in their heart. Uh, I have seen it and all my courtiers have seen it. Uh, what? 
only visible to the Honourable? <laughs> In that case, you have definitely not seen it, for I am your wife. I know you better than you do yourself. <laughs> and, and, and as for those courtiers, why, they are the biggest pack of sinners in the land. King began to think, he said, yes, it did surprise me that the finance minister, for example, uh, claimed to see it, but he, he assured me he did. Um, if that is the case, said the Queen, let me prove whether it's there or not. Here, and she picked up some water. The water from God will remain on the cloak, the robe of heaven. And she dashed it down at the king. And of course, there's no water on the robe whatsoever. And so it was, the king realized he had been tricked. But my dear, I, 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 I have agreed to pay the man who gave it to me 10,000 gold pieces laughed the Queen <laughs> and told the King what to do. And so it was that when soon after the King returned to the court chamber, he was carrying in his arms something which was clearly very heavy. He called the man to him, my friend, look, today I have received Two gifts from heaven, for just now an angel appeared, bringing me this sack of gold, for heaven did not wish my treasury to be burdened by paying you your reward. <laughs> Let me count out the money now. And as the king did so, he said, of course, gold from heaven, Anyone who is unable to see it, not only are they unworthy in their heart, they are unworthy to live. And so when the king had finished, the man thanked the king, drew the money to him, put it into his pockets and left, thinking, yes, Allah may have given me more brains than some men, but I should never forget the brains he has given some women. <laughs>